Getting the switch onto Sam Hauser, Curry reads this stunt by Brogdon on the strong side, going double behind the back. Even after Dante clears out, all this traffic and Brogdon coming over to trap force Steph to give it up, right? It's actually just another hard stunt from Malcolm, which Curry's already aware of, and he goes hezzy dribble, hard cross, back between the legs right, and step back bomb from about the logo, looking away while it falls through. The shooting range and balance off the dribble from prime Steph is different. All without Wiggins, the Dubs defense locked up their old pals in the Boston Celtics. They held the team with the best offensive rating of all time to an individual season worst 107 points. Despite a late 11-2 run from the Celtics, who for the most part had one of those nights, after Steve Kerr called his second time out down the stretch, the Warriors finally threw a counterpunch. Kaminga postered Tatum, Poole stuffed Jalen Brown as Jordan and Jonathan displayed the future is bright. Meanwhile, the Splash Brothers made an insane 26 field goals as Klay Thompson posted a game-high 34, and Steph closed the game out with daggers when Boston made it close. Moses Moody replaced Anthony Lamb as the second-string combo forward, giving Steve Kerr a solid 12 minutes. The front court was also solid as Kevon Looney racked up 15 rebounds, while Draymond had 11 points, 4 boards, and 2 dimes, plus a block. Albeit in the midst of a rough season, the Golden State Warriors just remind reminded us who they are. Right before breaking down that, just 10.9% of you watching are subscribed, so if a higher chunk of you were, that'd be helpful. Leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and please follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links down below in the description. Thanks so much for the support. Back to the content. We'll get to the feel-good W against the powerhouse Celtics, but what made the victory so much needed for Golden State, in my opinion at least, is the fact that this season has been anything but smooth sailing. This team's 2-11 on the road, and in many ways, it's been a rocky start to the year for the reigning champs, to say the very least. While the dubs are 12-2 at home, the struggles away from the Chase Center are far from behind this Warrior team, and it won't get any easier when they face a Bucks team on Tuesday that just got Chris Middleton healthy. Despite the turbulence entering what's going to be a six-game road trip, the dubs currently sit at number eight in the West, and the number one seed is still four and a half games within striking distance. Against Boston, the Celtics were missing a big part of their early success in Al Horford, and also a player who's been out for the entire season in the Time Lord Robert Williams. However, canceling that out is the fact that Golden State was missing their second option Andrew Wiggins, yet still played exceptional defense and blew out the Celtics by nearly 20. Jason Tatum admitted post-game that he needed to be better, but it just seems like the Warriors are a bad matchup for JT. Styles make fights in the NBA like in any sport, and the Warriors match up well to stop the Celtics game plan and personnel. That's what we saw last spring when the Warriors won three straight and went on a 21-0 run in Game 6 of the Finals, and it's what we saw on Saturday night. The Celtics have the best roster in the NBA, an exceptional top-heavy talent with Tatum and Brown, but when it comes down to the matchup of Boston versus Golden State, specifically, the Warriors having some guy named Stephen Curry, a second Splash Brother following two major leg surgeries in Klay Thompson, who can at times match Steph's shooting prowess, and a deep roster consisting of an all-time great defender in Draymond Green, gives them a big three that's built to stop teams like Boston who try to outscore you, which has become the Celtics' approach without the best defensive center in basketball, Rob Will. Based off the lack of attention Clay receives, if you're a non-Warrior fan, you wouldn't be aware of it, but this man's quietly coming off his 8th 20-plus point outing of the year, 4th 25-plus point night, and 2nd 30-plus point game after a game-high 34-piece against the team with the best record in the association. Going from Clay to his typical backup in Jordan Poole, who started against Boston, and Poole had a rough shooting night going 1-for-9 from deep and shooting 5-for-16 from the field. Still, I like the fact that Jordan ended the night with 20 points, 4 dimes, and a block. To be fair, he was a minus 1 against the Celtics, but evidently the game's starting to slow down for Jordan. Keep in mind, he's adjusting to how defenses are guarding him this year. It's different than ever before. In a recent interview with The Athletic, Jordan said, How people are guarding Steph in the first unit is how they're guarding me in the second unit. When we're not on the court together, I get the same coverage as he gets, end quote. Getting used to being guarded like a number one option takes its fair share of time for a player, but the target on Poole's back is nothing new for him. In 2019, a CBS reporter called the product of Michigan who was selected down at pick number 28 the worst pick in the entire draft. 
I wonder what the guy who said that is doing nowadays, whereas JP's getting a fat bag and is coming off a championship series where he posted 79 points over six games on a 44-39-91 shooting split off the bench. In terms of 22-23, Jordan's numbers as a starter this year are incredible, as in those games he's posted 20, 36, 23, 21, 26, 36, 20, and 30 points respectively. Going from the Michigan product in Poole to the Michigan State product in Draymond Green, and the advanced stats prove that Golden State's enforcer is playing his heart out in a contract year. Dre's played 97 minutes in lineups without Steph this season and posted a 99.5 defensive rating, which would rank number one among all teams, and he's also posted a plus 7.7 .7 net rating in those minutes, which would be second best behind Boston. Back to the franchise player though, and in addition to the look away triple like the one broken down to start this video, Steph hit another 5 threes aside from that one, which came from 25 plus feet away from the basket, 4 of which came off the dribble, pretty insane. The underrated defense from Wardell was also on full display. On this possession, he desperately shuffles over to cut off Brogdon's attack after Malcolm kicks it out. Steph completely stops Jalen Brown's drive. Then he smartly rotates to Luke Cornett to stop any potential entry pass. Just fluid defensive chops. Last year, Curry was number 4 in defensive rating among point guards directly behind Marcus Smart. This year, Steph ranks just number 11, but he's directly ahead of Marcus Smart. He remains criminally underrated on defense. You can't forget about Jonathan Kaminga's contributions to the W against Boston. Kaminga played 0 minutes in the finals, but has recently been showing he's ready to contribute as a regular rotation guy. In 21 minutes against Boston, Jonathan posted 14 points, 5 boards, and 3 dimes. Curry spoke on JK postgame, saying he belonged out there tonight. You could really feel that, end quote. Draymond said postgame that he's not concerned about anyone in the West. And while that may be a bit of a stretch, considering how the Pelicans are playing, and I also think Golden State's second round matchup from last year in the Grizzlies could be a problem, based off Green being a four-time and reigning champ, we can't really doubt the man. Of course, we also can't doubt the production of Steph, but while Twitter casuals continue to claim that Steph's in his typical December slump, Curry's having a 50-40-90 season while averaging 30 points per game. The next highest scorer who's posting a 50-40-90 campaign this year is averaging 7.9 points per game. Question is, was this win against the best team in the NBA because the Warriors match up well with Boston, or can the Dubs build off it? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out in the top 5 commenters by December 21st, earn free merchandise of their choosing, so leave your take down below. Today's speaks winner is Jason Robinson, who says, I'm totally a fan of Zion's dunk and I understand the unwritten rule, but I love the dunk in the context that it happened against the team they were playing. Thanks for watching, 